Uh, can you share why the abortion issue is important to you? Um, well, I think we should be able to choose what we do with our bodies. I don't think anyone should be able to choose what I do with mine or what you do with yours, right? Where would you say you stand on the abortion issue? I guess I'm in favor. In favor, yeah. okay. I think that women should have the right to make the choices of their body, um, but I'm certainly not in favor of real late abortions, but uh, at least in the beginning, there's a lot of circumstances with rape and abuse and things that I think that uh, uh, abortion is can be a, a positive thing. We've got too many people on this planet to begin with. It's not a baby yet. You're not saving anything. Um, Part. Again, if it's late enough, sure, but early enough for most you know, abortions would happen. It's not a baby. It's not really saving anything. Um, so even to have that kind of heroic mindset, self-heroic, can be really toxic because, one, you're really, let's say my friend here was pregnant, and I was like, hey, have that baby. Um, and then you're like, okay, but I can't take care of it. And like, you should have thought about that. But I'm not going to take care of that baby as the church. We aren't. So it's a lot of unfair burdening to push this person to have a child that they either don't want, can't have, or might hurt them. I mean, you can love a child, of course. It doesn't matter where it came from. But what if they feel like they can't? Or what if they don't have any money? What if they're homeless? And they're gonna have a child on the street? That's not right. That's not good for the child. You have to always think about the child. counseling at the uh, Planned Parenthood and the FPA here in Long Beach. It's been an amazing experience talking with women, watching them decide to make a choice for life. Uh, it's rewarding and yet it is at times uh, challenging because you do not realize who you and what you're going to meet there at that time. Well, I got involved in sidewalk counseling because um, I've had abortions before. And so I know um, what it does to a woman when they have an abortion, the aftermath of an abortion and how it causes uh, different things. It caused me to be depressed. It caused me to be suicidal. It took me in a, in a wrong path. It didn't make my life better. And so my ministry is called Mothers Helping Mothers. And it's a ministry that God gave me. And he said he wanted me to see myself as a mother uh, willing to help other mothers. Over her, her children, and everything that concerns her, Lord. Let her grow, let her increase in faith, Lord, in her relationship with you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I've been advocating for the unborn for over three decades. My choice is um, centered around God's choice. Um, I know these are precious babies that deserve to live, and I know their lives are worth fighting for. Please think about this. In, in this building, they are murdering babies. Who will remember that? Well, what got me involved, um, one Sunday there was a volunteer um, that came to our church and was looking for volunteers for um, the local pregnancy resource center, and I signed up. What fuels me to go out to the abortion clinics is because of all the lies they tell these mothers about abortion and you know how abortion is legal that it's nothing you know wrong with an abortion we have a world around us that's telling us it's okay it's okay there's nothing wrong but there's something wrong with murdering a baby the thing that i understand about my love for the lost is they are blind they're dead and they have no idea what they're doing that's one of the challenges here on street counseling is to feel that you are demonstrating love on the street. That love is a conviction that comes from knowing that they don't understand what they're doing. I first heard about his nesting place in a prayer meeting. My friend was praying for the ministry and after our prayer meeting, I asked her to share more about it. I loved how they um, 
provided a safe haven for the girls. I loved how the girls had daily devotions, um, church on Sunday. I love that it was Christ-centered, and I love that it was actually an opportunity for the girls to have a new beginning. When I found his nesting place was actually showing love and had hope for a woman in a time of her crisis, it was exciting for me to hear. I wanted to be part of this right from the very time I heard of it. I would not be able to do this if I didn't have the resources of his nesting place or the pregnancy centers. It takes a team and so I thank God for the support of the different ministries that are involved that want to help these moms. Yo vivía con una amiga, rentaba, compartíamos como un cuartito, pero un día la, la dueña no, ya no quiso que estuviera yo ahí y pues tuve que buscar dónde, dónde, dónde ir a vivir y luego estaba embarazada y pues tuve cuatro meses y tuve que, mientras estaba buscando, pues dos noches, como dos noches me quedé en el carro hasta que llamé al 211 y y me contestaron aquí. I had a one year old living in a tent and at night, you know, there's when there's no one out, I I didn't have anyone to protect me or to protect her and I was pregnant, so it made it really hard, you know, because I was afraid that I I wouldn't be able to do anything to protect us. And so coming here, I I had that sense of safety. I remember Patricia was so like happy and, and loving towards my daughter. When she welcomed us in, I can see through her interacting with my daughter, you know, that, that we would be safe here. That day that I met Pastor Liz, I was in the office about to get an abortion, and that's when my friend came and talked to you. I didn't want an abortion, but I felt like it was the right thing to do in order to get my kids back. And, but when I came outside, I stayed and I listened to all the great advice, all the help, that Pastor Liz had to offer. I do find hope and faith in working with the mothers here from my own personal experience of life, um, that God is always on time, he's never late. Some moms do leave this program here at his nesting place as a changed person, some don't. But I don't give up hope for them. I know God will step in and continue watering those seeds for those moms to become changed and come closer to God. I do reach out to them every now and then just to make sure they're okay and ask them, well, are they reading their Bibles? Some say they do, some say they don't. But I just keep praying for them because I know it's in God's hands now. I always tell them to keep in mind, it may look like everything's coming at you all at once, but I believe every woman or mother that comes to his nesting place, they come here for a reason, even if it's just for a couple of seeds to be planted and for somebody else to water it. But they will remember their experience here at his nesting place, just like I did. And when I did make it, and then when I did get on my feet, I came back here. Yo cuando llegué no, no, no tenía, no era muy apegada así como en el cristianismo, pero pues te ayudan a acercarte más a Dios y estar más apegado a Dios porque uno lo necesita y pues yo sé que, que cuando uno tiene fe todo es posible y gracias a esa fe yo voy a tener a mis hijos de vuelta conmigo.
I have had one woman that went inside, came back out, went inside, came back out. I get a call two days later from his nesting place. All of a sudden I find out that she's here. She didn't go through with it. That was a joy. But the heartbreak was not knowing. Many times we leave and we don't know what is going to happen. We don't know what kind of change mind is going to happen. But I think understanding what God has called me to do, and that is to share. The work is up to God to change hearts. I can't change a heart. I would like to say to the other churches listening to what I'm saying today is that it's very important for people to get involved having action behind that faith and going out there and being a voice. Um, these are girls that are coming from your local churches and they're telling us what church they go to. And if abortion's not spoken in the church of what abortion is, um, we're seeing them coming into the abortion clinic. It is a race, but it doesn't matter who get there first as long as we all just get there. And I feel like every soul is worth fighting for because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. It's definitely more about just having the baby be kept than actually preserving its life and treating it as a human being once it's been birthed. There are a lot of people who think that the pro-life movement only cares about the babies. And what I love about his nesting place is they have proven that that's not true. I have gone to many of their banquets. I have spoken to many girls over the years. I've heard their testimonies and I have watched his nesting place take girls from very difficult backgrounds without any education. They bring them in, teaches these girls that God has given you gifts and talents and these girls start understanding understanding how to use them to be a blessing to their own families. Who are we fighting for? The woman who has simply given up, who thinks there's no hope left for her. We fight for her life because we know that she is worthy, and in Jesus, we show her where her true hope lies. Here at His Nesting Place, we believe that every woman and every child are worth fighting for. They say it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes an army to raise up mothers and fight for them truly fighting for their lives and fighting for their souls. So we thank you for helping us fight the fight in this mission field that others choose not to even get involved. They don't even want to look in this direction. We thank you on behalf of every woman and every child that may not know that through your help, we can help show them that they are 